Can you put battery?
Good evening to all my wonderful brothers and sisters. We have started medical and surgical nursing. Totally 120 pages we plan to discuss. If you come to Nampali Hyderabad Center, I'll give you that notes also in medical surgical nursing. So we reviewed few concepts about inflammation, et cetera, et cetera, in the last two classes. This is the third class. So can you please drop a line in uh, the WhatsApp groups of your friends also that the live class has started and share the link with them. So with that preamble, let's make the great beginning, uh, sister. How do you do the diagnostic evaluation of the joints? It is called arthrography. Arthro means joint, graphy means evaluation, diagnostic evaluation. So why do we do, when do we do arthrography? Whenever the patient is having joint pain, joint pain can be because of any loose bodies. What is a loose body, sister? Typically osteoarthritis, when the cartilage is degenerated, let us say in the knee joint. Then when there is a osteoarthritis, then a small piece of bone, it is called osteophyte, that become broken and it forms in the joint, that is called loose body. So whenever loose body is there, patient will have a lot of pain when he is walking. So whenever pain is there to evaluate what is the cause of the pain, we do arthrography. Similarly, somebody had joint disease. You want to know the progression of the joint disease. To know the progression you do, arthrography. So how do you do this? You will inject the contrast into the joint and then the joint is put on a range of motion exercises and then you take x-rays. That is how you film the joint. That's called arthrography. So as a nurse posted in the orthopedics department, good to see Kashinath, Palakurti and many more who are all online. So, uh, typically, we, what is the nurse's responsibility? You assess the allergy because you are injecting a contrast agent. That's the reason you need to know whether the patient is having allergy to that. Then that is the main responsibility is what you need to remember. The next investigation that you need to know as a nurse is bone densitometry. What is the condition where the bone density, density of the bone came down, bone is very fragile. What is that condition called? Osteoporosis. So bone densitometry is used to assess the bone mineral density. It will help you to understand the risk of progression of the osteoporosis. So this is Typically, the arthrography, where uh, you are injecting the contrast agent into the joint and taking the film. This is the bone densitometry. So there is one x-ray arm. And uh, once you take uh, a film, you know what is the bone density. And by knowing the bone density, you know whether osteoporosis is there. And if the osteoporosis is there, then what will you do? Then there's a treatment for osteoporosis. So what is meant by osteoporosis? Porosis means if you look at the bone structure, there is a matrix in the bone. The matrix in the bone is decreased. That is called the, uh, the matrix in the bone is decreased. That is called osteoporosis. 
osteomalacia is different from porosis malacia is different porosis is different what is the difference malacia means the calcium content calcium content in the in the matrix what is calcium depositing in the bone matrix called mineralization of the bone matrix mineralization of the bone matrix is decreased if it is osteomalacia whereas the matrix itself is decreased if it is porosis so you should know what is porosis and what is uh, malacia very clearly very good kashinath and many more uh, so kashinath where are you from are you a nurse or a doctor can you please punch very good kashinath good response that is how you should enjoy a live class by actively answering the questions so kashinath can you tell me you are a doctor or a nurse and where are you from good city are you from so um uh, yes osteoblast versus osteoclast versus osteocytes So, what are osteoblasts versus osteoclasts versus osteocytes? Very good. Kashina is from Kamaradi, BSc Nursing. Very brilliant student in our group. Excellent, Kashina. Now, osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are the stem cells, and they give rise to osteocytes, which will. and osteoblasts will help in building the bone osteocytes means they are the mature bone cells and uh, typically they are the ones which are helpful in maintaining the bone housekeeping function of the bone osteoclasts are the large cells that break down the bone so osteoblasts osteocytes osteoclasts you need to know so you have a stem cell from that a mononuclear cell will form that will form a fused poly carrion that becomes osteoclast which will dissolve the bone then this osteoblast progenitor become pre osteoblast become osteoblast and that helps to build the bone that is what you need to understand so how do you classify bones sister long bones short bones flat bones irregular bones let's know one two words about each of them so uh very good osteoblast is bone forming osteoclast is bone destroying very good mohammad imran mohammad imran is bsc nursing from hyderabad excellent excellent i am really proud of you guys please do come to nampali center i will be happy to give you 300 in around 300 pages notes covering all the 14 subjects in nursing okay and also be part of our group and uh, i want all of you to crack the government job in uh, the upcoming telangana state public service commission tspsc staff nurse recruitment exam now what are the various anatomical terms that you need to know flexion and extension what is meant by flexion flexion is describing a bending movement that decreases the angle between the proximal and distal segment for example uh, if you take uh, the hand so when you when you do when you bring the forearm closer that is called flexion whereas if you the angle is increased the angle is increased that is called extension supination means like you are taking soup 
supirena. So your palm is facing the roof is supination. Press is pronation. So whenever your palm is facing down, you are pressing. Na. So you remember that is called pronation. So if you make the patient lie down with the head of him facing down, that is pronation. Supine position means you turn him so that he is looking to sky. His head is looking to sky. That is called supination. So that is what you need to very clearly remember. Similarly, what is internal rotation? If you move the limb, if you move the limb so that so that it is it is it is going inward, 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 outward, inward, outward, inward. So when it is becoming inward, it is internal rotation. When it is going outward, that is called external rotation is what you have to remember. Abduction is away, adduction is closer to body. Abduction, adduction. Elevation, depression. Your mandible is there, no? Mandible depresses, mandible elevates. Mandible is the jawbone. Mandible elevates, mandible depresses. Mandible elevates, mandible depresses. You have internal external rotation, pronation and supination, you understood, right? So, so this is supination, like you are drinking soup. This is neutral and this is pronation. This is extension, this is normal, this is flexion. Then this is, you are doing external rotation when you are moving the foot out. Then this is internal rotation when you are moving the foot inward. This is another example, if in the hand, you are taking it out, external rotation. And when you are bringing it close, that become internal rotation. So these are the fundamental terminology that you need to know, sister. So what is the diet? When the diet with high calcium content is, uh, do you want to give to a patient who has a fracture on a prolonged bedridden patient, do you want to give? No, generally not indicated. So there are certain important precautions you need to take when you are handling an orthopedic patient with a fracture. Always you handle the cast, plaster of Paris cast will be there, no? With your palm, not with your finger. Because if you use the finger, then it is going to cause pressure within the cast. Cast is all that putty material, no? So always use palm rather than finger. And the cast should not be covered until it is dry. Very important principle. And you use the fan to circulate the air. Then don't never elevate an amputated limb on a pillow. Because if a person who has an amputated limb, if you elevate on a pillow, it will lead to contracture. That is very, very important. So any patient who has a fracture, the diet with high calcium content is not indicated. Tomorrow, examiner will ask you this question very clearly. Then, you handle the cast with the palm, not with the finger. Second important principle. Never elevate a amputated limb under a, under a pillow. That is a very, very important principle you need to remember. Now, very good to see five online uh, uh, attachments. Very good. Now, splint. What is the meaning of a splint? Splint is used to support and demobilize a body part in a functional position. See, every body part has one particular functional position. Okay? So, that is the best position where you have no discomfort. That is called functional position. So, basically, why do you use splint? Splint is basically to immobilize the body part. Then what is the difference between a splint and a brace? Let us look at splint, one example of a splint. So what is this called as? This is an example of a splint. 
finger splint, etc., etc. So now you understood. No, this is called as a splint. What is the purpose of the splint? Splint maintains and immobilizes the joint in a functional position. That is the purpose of splint. It is very easy to apply. It does not cover the entire part, so that circulation is not uh, compromised. It can easily be removed. You can see the injured part. Everything is possible when you apply the splint. Is what you need to understand. So you should know what is splint, what is brace, and what is the difference between the splint and brace. You should understand very very clearly. Excellent, Muhammad Imran. Wonderful answers. So, it protects the open wound. The splint protects the open wound with the sterile dressing before splinting. That is very important. If it is what is meant by open wound? Open wound means skin is breached. Skin is broken. Underlying tissues like bone, everything is visible. That is called open wound. Closed wound means the overlying skin is not uh, broken, but there is an injury underneath that skin. That is called closed wound. So whenever you have a open wound, protect it with sterile dressing before you do the splinting. That is very important. Coming to brace, what is the purpose of brace? Brace supports, brace controls the movement and it prevents additional injury. That is the main purpose of the brace. So braces are used for very longer term of use and using braces the deformity is corrected and the movement is enhanced, discomfort is minimized. That is the purpose of braces. So what is this sister? This is an example of a brace. Brace is worn for a long term Long-term effect is what you should remember. So what is the nursing responsibilities? Whenever you are having a patient who need cast, splint, brace, etc., etc., etc. Can online students can punch whether the voice is loud and clear for all of you? Please punch whether the voice is loud and clear all of you. So, you assess the neurovascular status of the client before and after the procedure. So, whenever you apply any cast, plaster of, plaster of Paris cast or splint or a brace, you always check whether any blood supply stopped, any nerve is getting compressed because of your brace or splint. Always look for five P's. What are the five P's? P for pain, P for pallor, P for paresthesia, P for pulselessness, and P for paralysis. Pain, pallor, paresthesia, pulselessness, paralysis. Any of these things did the patient develop after you applied a plaster of Paris cast, or you applied splint, or you applied brace, you need to really look for. In the first 24 to 48 hours, you make sure that the extremity is above the level of the heart. So you keep bed end elevated or uh, you keep the hand in elevation so that edema doesn't occur. That's very important. After you apply this uh, brace, cast or split. Always monitor for the complications. What is the very, very Dreadful com complication that can occur. Thank you, Kashina and uh, Muhammad Imran. So, after the TSPSC exam is over, you should come with a laddu to me saying that, sir, we got the job, right? So, I'm waiting for that. So, very good. Now, uh, the five P's, 
monitor for compartment syndrome. What is my compartment syndrome? You have tied the plaster of Paris and the edema increased inside that closed compartment or there is an internal bleeding into that fracture and that led to the limb swollen against that closed cast and that will compress a lot of nerves, everything. That is called compartment syndrome. Similarly, when you apply cast, splint and brace, immobilize the patient, they can develop pressure ulcer. And for a long period, they are not moving. So that can lead to the muscle become thinned. That is called disuse syndrome. Disuse syndrome, pressure ulcer, compartment syndrome, these are the three complications as a nurse. You need to monitor whenever you apply the cast, the splint or a brace is what you need to remember. Very good. Kashina, you are much better than many of our doctors. Very good. For compartment syndromes, we do fasciotomy. Excellent. So this is the splint, this is the brace, and what are the five P's, three A's about the compartment syndrome? Pain, paresthesia. Paresthesia means timiri. Timiri, you know, in Telugu. So, just like needle pricking, timiri lagta na, to isko paresthesia bolte. So, it is like a kind of a numb sensation. Whenever you sleep in reading room, putting your head on the hand, you develop paresthesia. Pelor. Pelor means pura pila pila ho jana. Paralysis, pulselessness, five P's. Three A's, anxiety, agitation, increased analgesic requirement. Any of them, they are the signs of compartment syndrome. Now, how do you classify the bones? There is an axial skeleton. First know what are the types of skeleton. Axial skeleton which has around 80 bones. And the second type is appendicular skeleton. So what is meant by axial skeleton? You need to be very clear. Skull. The vertebrae, the hyoid, sternum, ribs, sacrum, coccyx, this is all central part of our body, no? That's the reason axial. What is meant by appendicular skeleton? Clavicles, upper limb bones, lower limb bones, your pelvis. They all come under appendicular skeleton. Similarly, scapula, humerus, they all come under appendicular skeleton is what you have to remember. So, if you look at the classification of the bones, axial skeleton, axial skeleton is having cranial bones. How many cranial bones are there? This is a favorite question of the examiner in all the nurse recruitment exams. Very good. So this is one of the favorite question in all the nurse um, recruitment exams. Yeah, so what are the cranial bones? Frontal bone, parietal bone. There is one frontal bone, there are two parietal bones and there are two temporal bones. There is one occipital bone, one ethmoidal bone, one sphenoid bone. These are all the cranial bones. Cranium, cranium. Kapal. Kapal moksha bolte na? Kapal me. Kapal mein kya kya rehta? Art bone rehta hai. Frontal bone ek, parietal bone do, 
टेम्पोरल बोन्स दो ऑस्पिटल बोन एक और एथमोइड बोन एक स्विनोइड बोन एक अच्छा भैया फेस में कितने बोन्स रहता है फेशियल बोन्स फेस में फोर्टीन बोन्स आर इन फेस जाइगोमैटिक बोन जाइगोमैटिक हियर इज वेरी प्रोमिनेंट नो राइट सो यू शुड नो वेरी क्लियरली द नेम्स ऑफ इट जाइगोमा जाइगोमा दिस इज द जाइगोमा दिस इज द मैक्सिला दिस इज द जाइगोमा राइट दिस द फ्रंटल दिस इज टेम्परल दिस इज ऑसिपिटल राइट इफ योर टीचर इज बॉल्ड वेरी इजी टू लर्न अबाउट द कैलवेरियल बोन्स so you need to know that zygomatic bone are two maxillary bones are two nasal bones are two lacrimal bones lacrimal means eyes two omer omer means on the top one palate you have hard palate no two bones inferior nasal one bone inside your nose you have concave two and uh, so the mandible is one bone hyoid hyoid is one bone and uh, that is a uh, that is the different bones let us look at them all these bones let us look them so what is a flat bone the bone in the skull is called as flat bone so there is a periosteum here periosteum then this is the spongy bone which is called diplo this between the periosteum and diplo you are having a compact bone this one compact bone so this is an example of a flat bone so what are the various flat bones sternum is a flat bone ribs 12 plus 12 24 ribs in the skull the frontal bone parietal occipital nasal lacrimal omer then scapula the shoulder bone totally you have 36 flat bones so you have a nasal bone in the eye lacrimal bone in the nose omer the frontal bone the parietal bone the occipital bone the scapula the hip bones the sternum the ribs they are all flat bones then what do you mean by short bones short bones typically they are there in your wrist and ankle in wrist what do you call them carpals and in the foot the short bones are called tarsals totally you have 28 short bones so what are the carpal bones sister scaphoid this hand this hand two lunate this hand this hand two triquitrum hamate capitate trapezoid trapezium understand so these are all called the short bones how are the various carpal bones they are carpal bones are all arranged in two rows one proximal row one distal row if you look at the carpal bones in your hand they are arranged as two rows proximal and distal so you remember she looks too pretty try to try to catch her you remember like this she she means you remember scaphoid look lunate t trapezium pretty pisiform tri triquitral trapezoid capitate catch capitate her hamet so this is a simple mnemonic she looks to pretty try to catch her is what you need to remember proximal and distal row of carpal bones then what do you have 
in the uh, what do you, what are the bones that you have in the ankle they are called tarsal bones what are the names of the tarsal bones talus navicular cuboid calcaneus medial cuneiform intermediate cuneiform lateral cuneiform once more tell with me talus navicular cuboid calcaneum medial cuneiform intermediate cuneiform lateral cuneiform they are all the short bones that you need to remember so all these things you need to be very sure about our bones and our system so you have the small bones inside the ear they are called auditory ossicles what are they malleus incus stapes you remember m i s malleus incus and stapes they are the three short bones in the ear then in the vertebral column how many vertebrae you have sister cervical vertebrae are seven thoracic vertebrae are 12 lumbar vertebrae are five sacral vertebrae is one coccyx vertebrae is one is what you have to remember okay now what are the long bones in the body femur in the thigh tibia in the leg fibula in the leg radius in the forearm ulna in the forearm humerus in the arm now there are three parts in the bone what are the three parts in the bone to show whenever you take a long bone you have a shaft of the bone what do you have shaft of the bone the shaft of the bone is also called diaphysis you have the growing end of the bone it is called epiphysis between the two you have you have a area which is highly vascular between epiphysis and the shaft that is called metaphysis is what you need to remember so once more tell me sister growing end is epiphysis shaft is called diaphysis between the two what do you have metaphysis is what you need to remember all right so that is a point you need to remember that whenever you take a long bone there is a shaft diaphysis the growing end called epiphysis now what are the short bones just before we study they are all cube shaped as wide as they are long jitna tall hai utna wide hai cube shaped are all short bones in the wrist you have carpal bones which are short bones ankle you have tarsal bones which are the short bones then already we discussed about the flat bones flat bones are all cranial bones like the skull calvarium they protect the brain similarly scapula the shoulder blade then there are irregular bones that do not fit into any of the above uh description typically they have a complex shape and complex shaped bones are all vertebrae and what are the bones composed of a spongy and a compact bone periosteum endosteum and medullary cavity a spongy part compact part periosteum endosteum medullary cavity they are all the parts of the bone any long bone is what you have to remember so that is all the story you need to know clearly about the bone so you can see this is the periosteum this is all the periosteum then you have a cellular layer of the periosteum cells are there then in the bone you have osteocytes in the lacunae then here you have the endosteum and if you look into the endosteum you find osteoclasts the matrix of the bone osteocytes osteoblasts so this is the typical structure of the bone 
is what you have to remember. So, I'm so happy. Seven students online yesterday were 12. Today, I thought at least 100 will come. At least bring you all your friends. Drop the um, WhatsApp joining link to all your friends. Don't worry about the price. You know, we will be more happy as teachers when many number of you become knowledgeable nurses so that tomorrow patient care is all in your hand. Doctors are nothing. All the care is in your hand. If you study well, if you're trained well, if you're knowledgeable, you are going to save a lot of patients. Right, sister? So please make it a point to come down every day to the class and uh, if more of you come, I'll take a longer class. All right? If you come to Nampali Center in Hyderabad, I'll take a long, longer class, even three, four hours. Khelte, khelte, hum sakte. But online means one hour, you are exhausted, I am exhausted. But anyway, thanks for coming. Prepare well. Still, you have three to four months time before the TSPSC staff nurse recruitment exam. And by that time, all your 14 subjects, I will do revision. And you will become very good. And uh, shortly, another three, four days, we are coming up with score nursing app. In that all these videos, all these PowerPoints, all these uh, notes, everything will be made available. All right. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.